Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got one for you today. Hanson were the band that took the world by storm. They're back on tour from February 11th at Birmingham, the Symphony Hall, with this brand new show called String Theory. And I'm delighted to say that Isaac Hanson joins us on the phone now. How are you doing, Isaac? I'm doing all right. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good. I mean, I've been looking at the details of this new tour, which basically starts in Birmingham on February 11th uh, at the Symphony Hall and then Manchester, London, Glasgow and goes around the world. It looks like it's going to cost a fortune. You've actually got a full orchestra. (laughs) Yeah, well, there's always the great risk of that, yes. Um, But luckily, uh, you know, the shows have been selling really, really well and the reception uh, so far uh, on the U.S. run has been pretty exceptional and uh so we're we're really excited about the fact that we're getting the chance to bring the show to the uk to europe to australia it's, it's going to be a lot of fun i've always said for any artist to stand in front of a big orchestra must be thrilling these are some of the best orchestras in the world and they're playing your music and your favorite music what a thrill oh it's it's huge it's the kind of thing that every songwriter dreams of you know there are there are always points uh, in uh, record making, no matter what record it is, where you're like, oh, this song, or oh, these couple of songs, oh, if we only had, you know, a string arrangement or some kind of orchestral, you know, moment in the, in the, you know, in this song and so on. And then to be able to not only have just a moment or just a song, but to really build an entire show around the symphony itself has, has been a real pleasure. And we've also had, uh, an exceptional collaborator, uh, a friend of ours named David Campbell, who is a Oscar-winning uh, and extremely experienced um, composer and arranger to, to help us do this. I mean, you're not doing so bad yourself. Grammy nominated, of course, multi-platinum group. If we look at the stats, I mean, they're mind-boggling. Uh, a string of top 40 singles, 60 million sales around the world. You didn't do bad. And I always ask this question because I'm a deeply unattractive man, Isaac. What's it like being a pop star and sex symbol? It must have been marvelous. Uh, yeah, it is. No, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't really quite ever know how to respond to that. Uh, you know, to be honest, I think for me, it was always about writing and performing songs that I could be proud of, uh, songs that I wouldn't mind singing and performing basically for the rest of my life. Um, and thank goodness that was the perspective because there are many songs uh, that we have been performing basically our entire lives and some of which are even in this string theory show, you know, songs from our first record, songs from our second record, third record, you know, it's, it's, so you have a long relationship with these songs as well as a whole lot of brand new material. And for me, ultimately, it was always about the music, no matter what. Just talk to me about the arrangements and who puts those together, because to do it for four people means you've got four different sets of music. When you've got a 100-piece orchestra, who does that? Who choreographs who plays what when? Because if everybody does their own thing, it's going to be chaos, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Well, so our our arranger, David Campbell, uh, was extremely helpful in this and obviously uh, very experienced in it as well, which was the key because, you know, you can come up with conceptual ideas, but actually executing them uh, in a way in which the orchestra will be able to uh, properly understand them and and play them properly night after night is a whole other story. Not to mention the fact that, um, you know, even though we are songwriters and and musicians, it's not the same uh, job. And so we, we, we enlisted what I think is probably the best arranger um, and composer of, kind of, uh, of his type. I mean, he, he basically has done, uh, David has done stuff uh, with everyone from Willie Nelson to Paul McCartney to, uh, to Rush to, you know, any number of, I mean, the, the list is actually too long to really go through. It's basically like mm-hmm. anybody you can think of that's really cool, yeah, he's done something with him. Um, and so he was the guy that helped us when we laid out the show and said, this is exactly how we want the show to go. These are the breaks, these are the sections. This is kind of what we're talking about. And we talked it through extensively and went through various different you know, renditions of parts and so on. And it was a long process. I mean, it was months and months and months of, of work. Mm. 
I can imagine. And then we look at your audience growing with you. I guess you're all on a journey together and they'll take any risk that you take. Because if you said back in the 90s, we're going to do an orchestral show, they'd probably laugh at you. Now, of course, they're 20 years older, as we all are, because we're all about the same age. I guess that's thrilling, isn't yeah. it? That they're willing to take the liberty that you are and they're coming with you on this sort of musical journey. Yeah, no, it's, it's fantastic in that way. And, and they really have taken a lot of risks with us over the years. I mean, they're the backbone of what we do, you know, especially uh, with an ever-evolving music business and, you know, uh, it, it being very difficult to make uh, uh, to make a living on just recorded music, um, you know, live shows are even more important. They always were, but they're even more important now than ever. And, and we have an incredibly musical fan base. I mean, they, we've, we've, We've made music the, the focus of our relationship, and they have, and they've kind of met us there and enjoyed, you know, enjoyed the ups and downs of all of it and, with us. And and yeah, they are evolving with us. I mean, you know, the coolest thing to me about this now is, you know, you'll have a combination of of fans who have been with you from the very beginning fans who just discovered you and are, you know, somewhere around the age of your first major record. And then things like some of your older fans, kids who mm -hmm. are, you know, you know, in their single digits or even in some cases double digits coming to shows for the first time. Um, so you have already a multi kind of layered um, relationship with people. And, and that's the fun thing. And that's the important thing about evolving and changing and and making new projects like String Theory. I never remember you guys having the reputation of being arseholes. Was that difficult? Because when you're at the height of fame and you're an international pop star particularly, it's easy to lose yourself, isn't it? Oh, it, it can be very easy to lose yourself. In fact, actually, I've, I've, I've watched it. I've seen it. And, mm. and it's, a really, it's a really painful thing to watch. Um, and, and it's understandable, too, because it's, it's a lot of pressure. Uh, especially, I mean, I do not... I do not envy solo artists. Solo artists in particular have it very, very rough and very difficult because how do you find the right group of people that really keep you properly grounded and will actually tell you the honest, unvarnished truth? Uh, you know, that, that's, that's a challenging thing. Um, luckily, Taylor and Zach tell me the unvarnished truth, and frankly, if I'm honest, I tell them the same, uh, probably a little too often, but, <laughs> but we are, um, but we, but what I would say is we don't do our dirty laundry in public, or at least we try not to. Mm. Uh, and that's maybe just because Welcome back to Celebrity uh, Radio It's Alex Belfield we Talking to some of the world's biggest stars I just watched the Bross documentary I suppose the, the equivalent the of your fame and success Was Bross in February this country Because of course the they had that this brotherly love But they also had the fame to lose themselves Have you ever considered sort of doing that? And what would we learn? I mean, do you regard yourself as normal at this point? I've been looking at the details of this new tour Which basically starts in Berlin on February Symphony Hall and then Manchester, uh, London, but, Glasgow uh, and goes around the world. It looks it's, like it's going to cost a fortune. You've actually got uh, a full orchestra. Relatively normal guy. Well, um, I mean, normal is a relative term. Yeah. Yes. Uh, in the sense uh, that we, uh, what uh, we're really saying is that really, really most well, things that I do on a day to day so basis far, are not normal. Uh, However, I really enjoy talking to people who do quote unquote normal day to day things. Whether it be literally someone who is a plumber or an electrician or someone who is an accountant a lot of times. I've always said for any artist to stand in front of a big orchestra must be thrilling. These are some of the best orchestras in the world. And they're playing your music you in your favorite music. Touch, what a thrill! Then, oh, then it's your your own wise. And, 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 uh, and also, it's really hard to write songs that, that, that you, know, they're, that they're you can relate really to much less anyone else can relate to. Uh, you don't know who you are, and it is. And so I think the key is making sure that you don't lose yourself. You know, I don't know, arrangement or some kind of like, got a lot of people that have helped me, they, helped me not they, you know, lose myself. Just song yeah. and, so on. and again, and having that sort of eyes around you, those two pairs of eyes watching each other through the tour, through life is thrilling because, of course, most people don't have that, as you say. And when you've got sycophants around you, that's the road to ruins, isn't it? When you've got yes men who are giving you everything and telling you you're perfect. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
defendant's behavior is a universal uh, extreme uh, situation in the entertainment business as a whole. And, uh, and, help us and if you're and if you're I mean, smart, you're not doing so bad yourself. You're already nominated, yes. of course. <laughs> the the road to ruins. The Very stats, finally on the I mean, orchestra, as well as your own material, uh, which of course we're going to get. And I notice you've booked actually my hometown. I'm not going to be in town for it, which is annoying. You're doing Rock City on Valentine's Day, which will be interesting. And that'll be the rock show. And then you've got the orchestral show starting in Birmingham. What do we get anything as well as your material, or is it solely yeah. all Hanson stuff? Uh, it is all Hanson stuff. Um, you know, I mean, we did uh, a couple of tours back. We did a what we called Roots and Rock and Roll, which was basically a show all about our influences and the songs that had kind of come from those various influences. So, you know, we talk about our own music and play a bunch of stuff like that, and then play music of ours that was performing inspired by the stuff we had just played. Uh, but this show. Uh, yeah, it's a, there are the original songs. composition. There's a lot of uh, new music in there, performing especially for anyone who's not a part of, uh, is not a Hampton.net member, uh, because we actually release songs from our first. Uh, we release EPs of five songs every single year to our fan club, no matter what we're doing on a general public level. So there is music uh, that's woven into this string theory show that was originally released. Talk to me about the the arrangements and who puts uh, those together, because uh, to do it for four people means uh, you've got four different sets of music. When you've got a hundred-piece orchestra, who does that? Uh, Who choreographs? Who plays what when? Because if everybody does their own thing, it's going to be chaos, isn't it? Uh, In addition to that, you've got songs that's you know well known as Umbop in there as well. So you know it's kind of extremely it runs the gamut, but most importantly. Uh, it's a story in it as well, about a young boy with an imposter dream. You know, you can was told that sexual that ideas, but actually was not worth chasing, chasing uh, and that he should abandon it and, and sure we'll go for something more reasonable. Uh, and, and, and he said, "No, I'm going to keep chasing the dream." Is a whole other story. And and really, I, that, uh, I hope that you know, if nothing you know, else, this shows. As far as all of us, it's not the same back at uh, the job, the young so heart that we once yes, had, and right. rekindle that fire and that dream for life, and hopefully uh, and find those things uh, that really do make uh, you want to pursue the better version of yourself. Uh, mm. Uh, and stuff, and the, uh, kind of the best goals you know, had, even if uh, even if they're old ones, and ask yourself know, whether or not number of, it's I mean, not too late to just dive in and make it, you know, make tomorrow, make it today, you know, um, and so that day where you, you really pursue the thing you that you felt like your life, gave your life, what you want to show to go, you know, that gave your life purpose. I suppose it's that old adage, isn't it? Never put off today what you could do tomorrow, because if you do it tomorrow and enjoy it you could have done it yesterday it's it's interesting Hanson string theory is on tour Birmingham Symphony Hall February 11th February 12th in Manchester at the Bridgewater Hall February 15th at the Royal Festival Hall Glasgow Royal Concert Hall on February 17th and then the world tour continues I notice you're doing a meet and greet I call them grip and grins they must be interesting uh, is there any WHD going on there <laughs> WHD, that's Wandering Hand Disease, by the way, Isaac. Oh, yes, uh, I apologize. I'm not up on my British accent. Um, there, there, may, there may be on the part of the grip and grinners, but not on my part. <laughs> they must keep their hands to themselves. Hanson will be on tour with String Theory from February the 11th. Isaac, it's been lovely talking to you. Thank you for your time. Thank you.